But no, that's what I, I really liked about them is, is and, you know, and Ed Shostak, to go back to him just for a second, he was doing the same thing. He came up through very minimal, very uh, reductive period, you know, in art. And in the early 60s, he was doing, you know, very geometric, uh, very formalist sort of work. And uh, it was sculpture, and he was doing these uh, three-dimensional sort of wall reliefs. Right. But his sketches, what, what took me was the, and fascinated me, was the sketches, they were flat. But yet, because he had a great eye for how to like knock off a corner here and a corner there or whatever, what it ended up happening was this thing started like popping and moving around moving. on the paper. Exactly. Even though it was done with flash paint and it was completely flat. You know, and I thought, wow, he was really had a vision. I mean, he, and then we started looking at the guy's work. Because I didn't know Ed when he was alive, but he came to me f through, um, you know, Isaac Aiden, who we represent. And Isaac was actually a studio assistant to him and knew him. Oh, and really? when he passed away, his family said, hey, you know, help us out here. You know, he, there's a oh, lot so of artwork here. Oh, so that's how happened. Yeah. Amazing. And so, I, and so Isaac and I started going through stuff. And at first, I, I wasn't sure how to categorize it or think about him, you know, because my brain is immediately trying to, you know, place him. And I'm seeing minimalism. I'm seeing, you know, videos. I'm seeing Maybe. op art. I'm seeing sculpture. Maybe that was the strength of it. <laughs> it was. And that was the thing. And then I started reducing it down to like two or three themes that were consistent throughout his entire career, even though aesthetically it couldn't look more different, but they were all gelled together through his deconstructive process and reducing things down to basically just an essential element and then reassembling those and focusing on negative spaces. He did it for 55, 60 years. Wow. It was amazing. And so, and you, and it was totally different aesthetics, but it was all the same thing. But what it was happening earlier on, um, he was, he started coding in his deconstructions. And so even though they looked minimalist and reductive, there were telltale signs that there was something else happening here. And it was sort of like the classic, you know, colored handkerchief in one pocket or the other or whatever. Oh God. And so what was doing was he was coding to people. And Do you think that was conscious? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so in discussions with his sister and other people, oh, okay. everything was by design. Okay. Nothing was chance. Everything was by design. And so it was fascinating. And so that's why I, I'm so attuned anymore now when I look at uh, art from different periods and I'm kind of wondering, that's just a little off. And so you're kind of wondering what's, you what's know, going on. Yeah, it's sort of like when you watch a movie, you know, um, they send a long pause on something and you're like, going, what does that have to do with anything, you know, or whatever? Well, hang on, it might show up later, <laughs> you know? And so it's the same thing with a, a director, you know, of a movie. They know how to draw your attention to something. It may not mean anything to you, but the gal in the seat next to you, she got it. You know, so I mean, I think there's a lot of that that goes on more than we think, because we are so... Programmed. Like, programmed for icons <laughs> and for symbols. I think some people more and, than others. Oh yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, if you think of the Pope of the Buddha, I mean, those mm -hmm. are, you know, some of the most familiar icons in the world. Everybody mm -hmm. recognizes them. Yeah, and that's why I was pointing out is that even as people walk up, if they really don't know anything about Hinduism or Buddhism, we've all seen these and that we sort of know what they that's sort of right. relate to. They don't know right. specifically how they operate or what they're about. They don't care. And it doesn't matter. I mean, you see it, you know it. It's, you know, it's not your religion or it's whatever. It's just part of your visual exactly. you know, vocabulary. And I think, uh, and that's how a lot of things end up getting co-opted, I think, like in advertising and, and, uh, and, and that. People just see things that they find attractive. They think it's interesting. They think it has a, a, a great compositional. But without your memory of those things, I mean, advertising yeah. would be ineffective. Yeah. You know, you need the blonde draped over the car and <laughs> <laughs> so forth. <laughs> that's a little extreme, but you know. But it is, but that's the point. Did you ever know Dean Fleming by chance from the Park Place Gallery? He, no. He. I, Dean's an interesting guy, and he um, he loved iconography, and so he. But he was bound to determine after he'd gone to Japan and he traveled around, you know, in Indonesia and different places, and was, and it got kind of hooked on iconography there. That's it's easy. Yeah, it is, and you, it's everywhere. And so he, because he, he went there for a whole different purpose, but he ended up getting hooked on just the, thinking about the mark, 
and the simplicity of the mark. And he tried and tried and tried, he said, for a decade to come up with something that didn't mean something to somebody else. And he's realized it's virtually impossible because every impossible. time he'd say, ah, this is the mark. Everybody's going to read it. Somebody go like, oh, that's something in Hindu. Or it's like, oh, no, no, this is, you know, Sanskrit. Or no, this is this. And he's like, you know. It's like, it's going nuts. Yeah. And, but it was the same thing we're doing here. You know, it's, he, he would put these things out and show them to people. And lo and behold, they, none of them could not be identified as something else by somebody who That's passed right. by them. That's right. And so he finally just decided, oh, the heck with it. I just like the way they look now. <laughs> not a bad way yeah and so I think so many artists have done this but you just realize how in so many different cultures um, and, and all around the world something means something to somebody somewhere you know and so it's 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 a fascinating thought but I, and I think that's my only point being is that I it's not surprising then that when you look at um, paintings like this and I think a lot of times when people see something like this it's data rich a lot of people will immediately come to it and then really start digging into it. And when they really start looking at it really carefully, they're one of two people. They're, you know, it seems like to me, often artists. As soon as they look at the side and see how something's made, I know it's an artist. I do it. They all do. <laughs> yeah, and so we make sure nobody's looking. <laughs> but otherwise, you know, you tend to get people who really get into the detail and they really want to understand and know and they just really get into it. Well, as an artist, look. you're grateful when somebody oh, asks yeah, for I those. love it. And as a dealer, as an art right. dealer and an art historian, I love it when I see people really dig into a painting and want to understand it. And, and uh, I had a great teaching moment. There was a show of Charlie Ray's, mm -hmm. you know, and there was this giant mannequin of the woman in the business suit. And I remember being there and I was prepping for a lecture there. And I saw two, you know, sort of high school kids and they made sure that there wasn't a guard looking and then they ran up and lifted her skirt up. <laughs> they, they wanted to know how real it really was. And it was, it was great. It was it's great sort moment. of like the scotch and the kilts. <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's like, people just have a perverse reason for wanting to know. <laughs> Teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been fun. Um, I'm trying to think if there's, this is another one we'll just look at real quick because it's, it's another one where you have really big elements that are sort of isolated. Like this, the lotus, I love the way that's sort of Pops. set out. Oh, and then these, I thought maybe you would collage these because some things are collaged. And these Chinese men are not, you've been, you painted these things, all of them, and I love I them. I and did. so some of them are all flat and not f f modeled, and this one happens to be modeled. And so I you think know, this, this is a Bridget Riley. Yes. There's another question mark, which is pretty well. Oh, yes. Well, oh, very well hidden. Pretty well hidden. And that's nice. I like the uh, geometry. I recognize it, but I can't place who it is. Neither can I, David. But I like it. And <laughs> I love these. That's really great. Yeah, I'm really drawn to the more optical things for sure. Oh, and then this is collage here. Looks, is that, that is often the frames. Yeah. Is this like, you know, Chinese papers are really... Yes, yeah. a lot of them mm -hmm. are origami paper. Yeah, or, they're beautiful. And then I love the way a lot of things like the temple here is done in a very obfuscated sort of way. And then when you step back and, and you know, just kind of ignore what's how it's done, you realize if, the shape. If you look around, I've used a different treatment in every yeah. painting, and that's sort of a generic stupa. And this is nice, too. I like the way it's very isolated. It has such a presence uh, to itself. What's the significance here? It's like this interlocking knot. Is that the, what a, you're talking about? It's an endless knot. Yeah. So that's basically what you sliced and diced for that other border over there that I said reminded me of Stella. And the only reason why it reminded me of Stella, I think, is because of the colors. Do you know when I did that, I had no... Yeah, that Protractor series, it's like you hit on the same sort of values and color scheme that he That's had right. in those. So, because uh, those are very distinct, you know, the way he did them. And, yeah, um, those were terrific, I remember. I oh yeah, those are great. Saw them the first time, and it's they're like, so big. <laughs> it's like, they're wow, just, they're amazing pieces, and I, I love this too. I wasn't sure. I mean, it's sort of a common, you know, thing. I, there's so many artists like Rolf Scarlet did a couple things like that. He was such a fascinating artist because he was so diverse the way he did things, but he loved geometry and color, 
you know, in sort of formal aspects. You know, I don't know where that came from. I mean, you know, there's a oft quoted Picasso line, you know, good artists borrow, great artists steal. <laughs> so, you know, I said, gee, you know, everything. everything it's expected like, of me. That's right. <laughs> everything is legitimate. There, there is nothing wrong. And then we did talk about, <laughs> here, see, here's the, the other thing. It reminds me of the conversation you and I had on the phone. I ask you, there, we have a small one here, but there, it, it's present in a lot of them. And it's two ovals, and they have either one, two, or three, or four dots. Well, with your background, you assumed it was some sort of... I thought of, it was mitosis or meiosis. That's I said, right. Are, you, are right. you emulating cell division? And, and given the array of things, the diversity of things in that your painting, I didn't think it was out of line to ask. <laughs> but again, it gets back to what your background is, is what these things, how they resonate with you. And you said, no, they're not. They're, they are organic, but you said they're sort of meditation foci. They're used for meditation. And there's, yeah. there's two sources. Some of them are shallograms, mm -hmm. and the others come from like a tantric painting <gasps> series oh. where they paint ovals and squares. They yes. all have symbolic meanings, but they're used as meditation aids. And there was something fascinating about that form. Oh, yes, the there was tantric. a black and white painting, I think you got of a big, big endless knot and has all of those floating over it. Yeah, not velocity, but something, vulvacity, or I, I forget the name of it, the so title. I, I often forget. Yeah, <laughs> it's about this size and it's black, white, and gray. Right. Yeah, a little bit of gray around the border or something. Right. Yeah, that's right. a great piece. I like that. I'm really drawn to those. But anyway, that's again is even. Aside from the religions, um, you know, the world religions, um, even between completely different sort of disciplines like art, history, religion, or science, depending on how you were sort of taught or what you learned, or it's there. It just, it's just, it's, it's, it's programming that when we do something for a living, as soon as you see something, you refer it back to what you know, and it's just, an, an, it's just almost a subconsciously. Tendency. Yeah, you know, I mean, I was a pre-med student. I took courses in genetics and spend hours over the, you know. That's why when I asked you about mitosis or meiosis, I thought, okay, this is gonna throw him for a loop. And you, you just immediately just went, oh, no, no, it has nothing to do with cell division. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how the hell do you know that? You know, but oh, now yes. that it understands why. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, yeah. well, very good. Well, I'm thrilled with these. I hope people take a look. Um, so if everybody who's watching the video, remember, like the videos, um, the catalog will be up on issue, and the catalogs are great because you can really zoom in. Um, they're high-res images, and you can blow them up if you guys didn't know that, if you're looking at things on issue. Um, that's one of the great things about that uh, digital catalog service, which is why we use it, um, because can, people can really zoom in on it. The other they're thing, great. too, is they're, um, they're, they're interactive, and you can have interactive elements, and we'll decide what might kind of work either out of this discussion or whatever, because there are some great things you pointed out that um, I would like for people, if they're not catching it here or seeing the video, uh, to become a, a, in, enlightened. <laughs> okay. I, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> Can't touch that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And My pleasure, um, I hope everybody enjoys the paintings. Thank you.